What's good, y'all? Welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed yesterday's video. Today, we'll be reacting to Cruz's surprise, Gordon, before final speech. Uh, I would assume it's Tom Cruise, because what other Cruise is out here just giving speeches for real? Um, but yeah, he's finna get some recognition, I'm assuming. We'll see what Tom Cruise has to say about Jeff Gordon. Original video link will be down in the description. Let's get into the video. A global cultural icon who has made an immeasurable impact on cinema by creating some of the most memorable characters of all time in films such as Top Gun, Days of Thunder, The Mission Impossible that franchise, is a fucking intro. Edge of Tomorrow, among so many others. Tonight, he helps say goodbye to a NASCAR legend. Please welcome Tom Cruise. <laughs> he said, oh shit, oh shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he was shocked his damn self. Like, really imagine, bro. Like, you're getting recognition from one of the top actors on your career. How are y'all? How you doing, man? Hey, Jeff. How's it going, man? Hey, guys. Good evening. So, look, I'm honored to present a legend. One who has meant so much to the sport over the last two decades and will continue to do so even outside of a race car. Now, I remember seeing the photo. His back to the camera, his team's eyes were glued to him, and they were learning then what the rest of us would soon know. This was it. And 2015 would be the end. We were happy for him, but sad to see him go. When you're treated to excellence every week for 23 years, well, that's not something that you let go of easily. And when news leaked out, well, there was a reaction from everywhere. But with a beautiful wife waiting and two adorable children and a back that's howling, everyone knew the word would come eventually. In his statement to the world, Brian France called him transcendent. And that set the foundation for his farewell a victory lap that played out on stages throughout the world. Daytona International Speedway, 30 Rockefeller Plaza, Rwanda, the Waldorf Astoria, the White House, and now the win. So he felt as comfortable discussing a championship with George Bush as breaking down Homestead with Kyle Bush, at ease with discussing SNL skits with Jimmy Fallon as racing door-to-door -door with Jimmy Johnson. And with that, he brought joy to millions used his immense and deserved popularity for the betterment of the world, both at home and abroad. I'ma say that Tom Cruise is absolutely killing this fucking speech. I don't know how people could get up in front of people and just tell, like, give a whole speech with eyes on you just listening to you talk. That shit is scary. Transcendence. A few reach it, he did. And although many of us want to say we'll miss you, what we really mean is, we thank you. So it's now my pleasure to welcome my friend, the four-time NASCAR Sprint Cup Series champion, the legend, Jeff Gordon. Jeff piloted the number 24 Chevrolet to 93 career victories, third most on NASCAR's all-time list. gonna be a tough night but that just made it a little tougher guys right how do you follow that up but uh oh my gosh first um thank you thank this entire industry but kyle samantha joe the entire jgr uh, organization what an impressive year impressive championship i mean you've come a long ways from being that kid wanting to get my autograph and then he, was, then he was my teammate knocking the right side off the car every practice. <laughs> but I'm really proud of you, how you've matured, um, you know, how you've grown as a person, how you handled adversity. You deserve this, buddy. You really do deserve this championship. Great, great job. <laughs> now, I've had a lot of people this year ask me, 
why not just one more year? Make it an even 24. Uh, right? It made me think, you know, for a second about it, but, you know, then I really quickly responded, hey, this goes all the way back to April of 1977 for me. Uh, this, uh, when I first was in introduced to a quarter midget. So to me, it's more like 38 years. Uh, it's been a long time. It's been an amazing ride. And, you know, to all those uh, who know my stepfather, John Bickford, they know that by maybe August or September of 1977, I was racing professionally. Uh, that's just the way it worked in my family, and I couldn't be more thankful. But, um, you know, so will there be another year? No, there won't be. I, I, I am so ready. I'm so content uh, because I'm just so proud of all, all that I've done. He's accomplished um, so much. I will say it's been absolutely amazing, and I couldn't have ever imagined how my life would turn out. Um, is that you, Annie? Yes, I knew it was Annie. If any of you have ever been to Texas Motor Speedway and heard somebody screaming and yelling, maybe blew your eardrum out, you know that that's, that's that lady right there. Uh, <laughs> so you know, much motor love. Motorsports has provided me lifelong memories and stories that I get to reminisce and talk about for years and years to come. NASCAR in particular has changed my life in ways that I could never really even describe. It's still really just a blur to me. It seems like it was just, um, you know, not that long ago that I was traveling from Indiana to North Carolina to see what NASCAR was even all about. And now here I am 25 years later, stepping away from one of the most prestigious series in all of motorsports and a fulfilling career that can truly only be described as remarkable i feel like every person wants to have this type of moment in their life where like you work so hard at something you love for years and you're recognized for it and people like people just recognize it like that's really the only way i could put it and like respect it for it and people love you for it and then you just retire and you just not, not give it up but like you just take a step back and you're like damn i really accomplished all this shit while i was here oh yeah i'm cool with this and then you just sit back and just watch and relax and enjoy the rest of the life you have left and for that, I am forever, forever thankful. All right. Uh, to the Fran yeah, thank you. To the, to the France family, um, to everyone at NASCAR, thank you, thank you, thank you for creating such an amazing series, for maintaining such a great series. It's, I've been so proud to be a part of it. Uh, thanks to Sprint, the media, all of our broadcast partners, Fox and NBC, for bringing this sport to the fans in a way that just continues to grow to even greater heights each and every year. Rick and Linda Hendrick, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for choosing me as your driver. I'm so proud to say I drove for one car owner, the best car owner in my entire Sprint Cup career. Bro, this is like, uh, he is, he making me feel some type of way. I want to thank everyone on the 24 team and everyone at Hendrick Motorsports who puts their blood, sweat, and tears into making the best teams in race cars every single day. Uh, and of course, you know, the team that I went to battle with this year in the last several years, um, you know, it was an interesting year to say the least. Uh, not always looking like we're gonna pull this thing off uh, the way we did at the end. But Alan Gustafson, you never gave up. 
I love working with you. It has been a pleasure. And I'm so proud of the way that this team battled, uh, that you led them, and uh, that we were able to go to Homestead and, and battle for that championship. I appreciate what you and the team, that effort, I appreciate that effort more than you'll ever know. You know, over the years, uh, we've had key partners that have played a big role, and some have been there all the way from the beginning. Exalta, thank you for your support all the way from the beginning, 23 years. Very proud of that. I'm proud that I drove a Chevy in all 797 straight starts. Pepsi, thank you. 18 great years together. AARP and the Drive Didn't Hunger, thank you. A great company and an even greater cause that I've truly enjoyed representing in the last five years. Ingrid and Ella and Leo, you're at the banquet. <laughs> and thank you to NASCAR for allowing them to be here. Um, but my gosh, this journey would never have been so special without the love and support that I have for my family. Um, my mom, my, John, uh, my stepfather, John, well, this journey wouldn't exist without them, so thank you to them. And the fans, where are the fans in the room? Oh, they allow fans in there? Oh, that's sick. Now, we got off to a bit of a rocky, I got off to a bit of a rocky start with the fans. Um, there were some cheers, but then there were some boos. Yeah. Um, but you accepted me. You supported me uh, so much over the years, and this year you rewarded me so much. And I, yeah, I greatly appreciate that. Uh, to all my fellow competitors, now, you know, when you compete against the same drivers 38 weekends, year after year, it certainly creates a few challenges here and there, as Martin alluded to. I'm just glad I know that he got the phone call. That's the first time I ever heard of that. That was like five years ago. Uh, <laughs> But I have truly, truly enjoyed racing with you, uh, all of you. And I appreciate the way that all of you compete at such a high level. Uh, and I really appreciate the way you represent the sport. This sport has a very bright future ahead because of the drivers and the competitors we have in this room and, and, and that aren't here in this room in this sport. So thank you guys. All right, so the question remains, am I going to miss it? There's no doubt. Uh, there have been some incredible moments and experiences that will be impossible to duplicate in the next chapter of my life. Yeah, sure, I, I'm going to miss you know, having that opportunity to win a Daytona 500 or maybe another Brickyard 400 or what it was like in that last Martinsville win. I mean, how can you even come close to what that's like? I'm going to miss the excitement of my team after a win and all the hard work that they put into it, knowing that it paid off. Or seeing Ingrid and the kids walk into victory lane and the look on their faces. Hearing those screaming fans and cheers <laughs> of thousands of fans pulling. I'm sorry. I'm just like, he's over here giving this like heartfelt speech. And I would, I'm assuming that's his daughter. His daughter's over here just looking at herself in the spoon in the background. I don't know if, I don't know if y'all noticed that too. But that, that was just funny to me. For you, there's nothing like that. Sure, I'm gonna miss those things. But there are a few things I'm not gonna miss so much. Like practicing in the middle of the day when it's 90 degrees, knowing that it's a night race. You're gonna be racing 70 degree conditions. <laughs> What's that all about? Um, standing next to a fan <laughs> it must have been you uh, <laughs> in a urinal who's so excited to meet you that they don't want to take the time to wash their hands before they shake your hand. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. If that, that was him, that's fun. Just called More him out. You can ever imagine. <laughs> Leading the race, you're seeing the white flag. Flagman's got that thing in his hand. He's getting ready to wave it. And inches before you get there, caution comes out. Nope, not going to miss that one. <laughs> Being the last car on old tires, this one's for you, Alan, on a restart, knowing that everyone behind you is on new tires. They're about to blow your doors off. 
on that restart. But your crew chief's going, no problem, man. You got this one, man. You got it. Don't worry. <laughs> and last but not least, debris cautions. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> the irony to all this is that when I'm in the booth commentating next year for Fox, those are the things I'm going to look forward to the most. <laughs> Have fun. Thank you, guys. So It's been so special. Thank you. I thank enjoyed you. that a lot. That was a really sick speech. I feel like after hearing his speech, he is extremely grateful for his career, for the team he, he what's, what's the word? Not played, drove for. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. For the team he drove for. He's just grateful for how his whole career, the good and the bad. He even talked about how there was some booze, but everybody grew to love him. <clears throat> everybody grew to love him. So it seems like he's he's content with how his career ended. He is ready for retirement. Also down in the comments below, let me know what you guys think would have happened if he would have drove for another team. Do you think he would have had the same success that he has today? Or do you think it would have been different? Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I love y'all. Peace. They wanna fall. What? Back when I was down bad, I was stuck in the mud. Now nigga didn't clean up Louis V on the so so.